Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning.
sa lahat. Magandang umaga po. Happy New Year once again. Sige po, come sing with us. Awitan po natin ang Diyos na buhay. Inaayayahan ko po ang lahat na tumayo. Yan, Panginoon, sa'yo po ang lahat ng papuri sa magang ito. Tanggapin mo po maging uh, mabuting sal- uh, halimuya, Panginoon, para sa iyo. Mula sa iyo, sa pamamagitan mo, at para sa iyo lamang, Panginoon. Pinakamataas na luwalhati, pasasalamat sa Panginoon lamang. Come on, let's sing. Beep, 
Panginoon. Hallelujah. Salamat po, Diyos. Tunay po, nararapat sa iyo ang pinakamataas na papuri at pagsamba. At ang buhay namin ito, Panginoon. Siya sa atin mo po, oh God, ang bawat puso nang naririto ngayon. And Lord, may we find continuous joy, oh God. Restore the joy of our salvation. Ito lamang po aming paraan, Panginoon, upang magkasalamat sa iyo, God. Sa iyong sugdulang biyay. At salamat. Salamat kay Jesus.
Tunay nga po, O Diyos, na inibig niyo po kami noon pa man. 
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we praise and thank you for the gift of salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. As you have given us the desire to live our lives as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you, renew our hearts and minds through your word and repentance. Forgive us of our sins and cleanse us, O Lord. Remove all unacceptable things in our lives. Gift us with more knowledge of you so that we may please you increasingly. Reveal to us our sins and let us be broken over our sins to hate our sins because you are holy. Thank you, Lord, for your sustaining grace. Your provision to us, your loving, ever-gazing eye on us, that we are your object of grace and mercy. Thank you for the people that you send on our way to help us. Thank you that you will the ultimate good of those who love you and whom you have called according to your purpose. Father, we ask for your blessing. Whatever you are going through, petition for healing, ace your exams, or simply get through your academics, your work, or business, your relationship with your spouse, children, or other people, or you want to pray for the church, or other people or difficult situations that you are in that cannot be contained to what I have mentioned. Lift them up to the Lord and I'll give you a moment. Thank you, O Lord, that you hear our prayers according to your will. And now, Lord, we pray for our sick brethren. Father, we pray for your healing touch. Restore them, O Lord, so that they may continue your ministry. Provide for them and their families also financially, Panginoon. Cure the sickness also of the mind that some of our brethren are experiencing. Lord, please provide comfort to them. We also lift to you our country. Have mercy on our nation, Lord, who continue to worship idols and put their trust in wood and stones, or even worse, to themselves, reaching to a conclusion that there is no God Forgive and restore our nation and provide opportunity, O Lord, to reach the unreached. We pray for our president, vice president, the senate, and other public servants of this country. Give them wisdom in solving the issues of the country. Hold them accountable to their deeds as well. And please uh, give favor to your people serving in the government. Protect them from those who wish evil to them. We want to lift this church's petition to you. We pray for our church, its leaders, the elders, 
deacons, ministry heads, and volunteers and members supply us with our needs. May we serve you with a cheerful heart and grateful heart. Continue to illumine our minds of your truth. May we be sanctified by your truth. May we be burdened to follow you and to serve you, to show our love for you. Enable us to love one another with a special love that you indicated for us to show being your disciples. We pray for every discipler to be strengthened to do the tasks that you have assigned them to do. May we live a life worthy to be called one of your own. May our heads and eyes be fixed to heaven with our feet firmly planted on the ground. We pray for more laborers in this church, O oh Lord. We pray for their commitment to the service of you and may it be clear to us that our service to you should not appear as extracurricular activity that we do every week. May we be fully convinced that our service to you is a privilege that you have freely given to us because of you redeeming us and now being part of your family. And lastly, we pray for the congregation, the viewers, and our pastor who will deliver your message this morning. Strike the hearts of the people here. May your sheep truly hear your voice this morning. May they be nourished by your word. Empower our pastor, bless his family and all his, uh, his dealings. May he be faithful to your calling of feeding, caring, and protecting the sheep. Be with us. This is our prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Today is Communion Sunday. And I hope those watching online, you have uh, already prepared the table elements so that you can join us as we participate, as we celebrate the uh, Lord's table uh, right after the preaching. And praise items, uh, we rejoice with the Regala family and the uh, Baltimore family. We know that we've been praying for them. They have been hospitalized for some time, and now they're... Uh, we have been discharged from the hospital. Purihin po ang Diyos. Tunay na tumutugon ang Diyos sa ating panalangin. Amen. And uh, today, we continue with our series on the names of God. And William Shakespeare wrote in Romeo and Juliet, A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. The name, sabi niya, of something doesn't affect its nature or essence. So, ang rose, tawagin mo man, kahit anong pangalan, mananatiling sweet. While that may be true for the flower, but it is not true for the names in the Bible. Throughout scripture, names of people and events hold through uh, tre tremendous significance. And perhaps they say, one of the greatest discoveries is that God himself reveals his names. But more than just a casual title, these names of God declare his nature, his character, his reputation, and his life. And the name of God that we are going to cover this morning is Yahweh Jireh or Jehovah Jireh, the Lord provides. We'll be using a story that is very familiar to perhaps everyone. Kung kayo po ay lumaki sa church, nag Sunday school, ay familiar na familiar kayo dito sa kaisaysayan ni uh, ni Abraham at ni Isaac, no? And I can think of another name of God that has made more headway in the Christian music than this one. And with this name of God that hangs around us. I'm sure we have a reasonably 
good reach or good grass to know what it means. But today I hope that through the word of God, the, as the Holy Spirit illumines the hearts or the eyes of our hearts, my friends, the na this name of God will move from head knowledge to heart knowledge. I hope that this name of God, Yahweh Jireh, will begin to change how we live life, what we worry about, what we think about, and how we think about others. But before we continue, may I request everyone to please stand as we read our passage this morning found in Genesis chapter 22, but we're on, we will only read verses 9 to 14. Those watching online, please follow along as we read the text. Altogether, then they came to the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood and bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And Abraham reached out with his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not reach out your hand against the boy and do not do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your holy son, from me. Then Abraham raised his eyes and looked, and behold, and behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering in the place of his son. And Abraham named the place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. This is God's holy, inspired, and inerrant word. You may all be seated. All people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Let us pray. Our gracious, loving Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. And as we gather in your presence today, we are filled with gratitude for the opportunity to delve into your word and explore the depths, Lord, of your nature as Yahweh, Jireh, our provider. Lord, we acknowledge that you are the source of all provision and sustenance in our lives. And so we come before you with hearts open to receive your wisdom and understanding as we meditate, Lord, on your promises of provision. May your Holy Spirit guide our thoughts and words, allowing us to articulate the profound truth of your unwavering care and abundance. We also pray for those who may be facing challenges in their lives, that they may find comfort and assurance in the knowledge that you are their Jehovah Jireh. Strengthen their faith, O Lord, and remind them that you are always faithful to provide. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The word Jehovah, the name Jehovah Jireh, appears only once in the entire Bible, it is in the passage in verse 14. It means God provides. At ito pong kasaysayan o story in Genesis chapter 22, makita po natin it involves a very, it is an interesting story that involves God, Abraham, and Isaac. No? Para lubos natin maintindihan ang atin pong, uh, ang pangalan ng Diyos na Yahweh or Jehovah Jireh, balikan po natin yung kasaysayan na ito. No? Makita po natin doon sa story, in Genesis 22, tinawag ng Diyos si Abraham upang ialay, i-offer ang kanyang anak, mahal na anak na si Isaac at maging burnt offering doon sa bundok ng Moraya. And it is unimaginable for any of us to grasp the emotional turmoil that comes with such a command. Imagine yung anak mo, iaalay mo, at susunugin mo dun sa altar. And so for Abraham, the weight of the situation was twofold. First, hindi po ba mamawala the potential loss of his beloved son? And second, he jeopardizes 
the fulfillment of the promise of God that through his descendants, he will build a great nation. Ito mo, di ba, si, si Isaac, ang promised son. At tapos i-offer niya, paano na yung pangako ng Diyos na magkakaroon ng isang uh, great na bansa? In verses 1 and 2, ganito po ang sinasabi. Now it came about after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. Siguro, yung sinabi ko nga emotional turmoil, nag-gets niyo po ba? From Beersheba, doon nakatira si, si Abraham, tatlong araw na lakad, papunta doon sa Moriah. Ano kaya ang iniisip ni Abraham? Itong kanyang anak na mahal na mahal niya, iaalay niya at susunugin doon sa altar. Di ba? Let me go back to my illustration na mahilig kayo sa pet. So, bawat isa. Pag kayo, yung mahilig sa pet, pag kayo ay nagpunta sa mall, di ba iniisip niyo, anong pasalubong natin sa, sa tuta natin? Sa aso natin? Di ba? Ganon kami ni Ining. Palagi namin iniisip, anong treat naman kaya ipatitikim natin kay Kenji? Di ba? Sabi ko nga, kung bata to, di grabe pa pala. No? Paging my children. Um, di ba? So, di ba? Kung titignan nyo. No? That, that, that. And remember, hindi siya nagpaalam kay Sarah. Tatlong araw naglakad. Sabi natin, tatlong araw babalik. Pag tinanong ni Sarah, ah, saan si Isaac? Binarbecue ko. Di ba? Ganun na magiging, ganun ang ano, napakahirap, no? It would have been enough. Now, listen. It would have been enough if God has simply said, take now your son. But God qualified that phrase three times. Tignan niyo po. Take now your son. Okay? Your only son. Whom you love. Isaac. Di ba? Malinaw, No? Your, sabi niya, only son. Now, we know that Abraham, meron din siyang anak sa labas, si Ishmael. But in identify si Isaac because he was the promised son. Sa kanya, sa kanya magtutuloy yung pangako ng Diyos. And look, sabi niya, di ba, whom you love. Tila baga, di po ba na it is as if tinutuya ng Diyos si Abraham. Seems that he, God was mocking him. But these words were meant to reassure him that God knew what he was asking. Alam ng Diyos kung ano ang hinihingi niya kay Abraham. By saying it this way, Abraham would know that God understood what would it cost him to obey. And verse 3, So Abraham got up early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he split wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place of which God had told him. The next morning, Abraham got up, nagempake, headed out to do what God had commanded him. Pagdating po nila sa mountain nung natanaw nila, sinabi ni Abraham sa dalawang servants, remember, binasa natin, maiwan kayo dito, kami na lang ni Isaac ang aakyat sa bundok. Pero sinabi niya, we will go back. Now, you see that faith? Di ba, alam niya, i-offer niya yung kanyang anak, pero sabi niya dun sa mga servants, we will go back. Okay. Then Isaac now begins to question his father. Where is the sacrifice? Nakita niya, dala-dala yung wood, dala-dala yung knife, dala-dala yung fire, pero walang iaalay. Di po ba? Abraham simply tells Isaac, God will provide. Honestly, at that point, Abraham didn't know saan mang gagaling yun. Or how niya gagawin yung uh, pag-aalay na yon. Okay? Verses 7 to 9, Isaac spoke to his father Abraham and said, My father. 
And he said, here I am, my son. And he said, look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. Nang dumating na po sila sa place of sacrifice, they built the altar. Okay? In arranged na nila yung wood. And now here, it gets real. Abraham binds Isaac. And then he places him on top of the altar. And then he takes out his knife. Now, did you notice, if you've read the story, it says nothing about Abraham looking around, trying to figure out a way out of this. Di ba? Hindi siya nagpalinga-linga, Lord, sasaksakin ko na, ah, saan? Di ba? Wala, siya, wala tayo nabasang ganon. And so, makikita natin, he was really faithfully obeying what God had called him to do. Now, at this time, Si Isaac, hindi siya batang paslo. He was in his early 20s. Isipin niyo yun, tinatali siya ng tatay niya. Di ba ang tanong niya, asan yung sacrifice? Tapos nakaganun lang siya, tinatali. He can outrun his father. He's in his early 20s. Si Abraham, 120 years old na dito. Kaya niyang itulak sapagkat hindi ba niya natunogan yun? Ako yata yung iaalay. Ako yung babarbikuhin. Hindi po ba na, na, na gets nyo, eh, palawakin natin yung ating uh, <coughs> isip. So, here we see also, mga kapatid, that Isaac displayed an enormous, a remarkable amount of faith and obedience both to his earthly father and to his heavenly father. Siguro nung tinaas ni Abraham yung knife, nagpikit mata na lang. Si Isaac. Sabi po ng verses 11 and 12, But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Do not reach out your hand against the boy and do not do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. It is now finally that God calls out to Abraham and tells him to stop. Di ba? Huwag mong ituloy. And then, nung pagtingin niya, nakita niya po yung ram. At yung kanyang horns ay na ano dun sa mga tinik-tinik. At yon ang ginamit niyang pamalit kay Isaac. At yon ang naging sacrifice. And then, in verse 14, it says that Abraham called that place Jehovah Jireh. Sa King James Version, makikita natin yun. And the passage even tells us that that means the Lord will provide. God provided a substitute, a ram that was sacrificed in the place of Isaac. It is in this context that God or Abraham gives the name of God, Jehovah Jireh. God is our provider. And his provision is himself. Abraham's obedience required an enormous extension of faith. Even though the command made no sense from a human's point of view, Abraham intended to obey it anyway. Now, looking back 20 centuries later, 2,000 years, the writer of Hebrews explains it this way. By faith, Abraham when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and the one who had received the promises was offering up his only son. It was he to whom it was said, through Isaac your descendants shall be named. He considered that God is able to raise people even from the dead, from which he also received him back as a type. Bakit? Inobey ni Isaac, sabi ng writer ng Hebrews, he believed na kahit i-offer niya doon si Isaac sa altar at mamatay, kaya siyang buhayin ng Diyos. Ganun kalalim ang kanyang pananampalataya. Now, did God ask Abraham to sacrifice his son? Yes. Was it 
a legitimate request. Yes. Now, did God, Abraham, uh, did God, or sorry, did Abraham know how the story would end? No. Specifically, did he know about the ram in the thicket? No. Ano lang ang alam ni Abraham? Ang alam ni Abraham, merong pangako ang Diyos sa kanya na ang gagamitin in si Isaac at ang kanyang descendants to make a great nation. At alam niya na merong kinuman si Diyos sa kanya, i-offer niya yung magiging descendants. Di ba? Ang, ang, ang puno ng descendants. Alright? Ang question, paano niya ngayon i -re reconcile yung dalawang magkalaban di ba? Na, na pangyayari? Ito ang pangako, yung pangako kailangan niyang i-offer. You see that kind of faith? Ano po ba ibig sabihin ngayon ng Yahweh Jaira? The Lord will provide. Now, alam niyo po ba yung salitang provision is an interesting word made up. It's a compound word made up of pro, before, and vision to see. Literally, to see beforehand. To see beforehand. Ano ibig sabihin? God sees your need beforehand and then he makes provision for that situation. Ngayon, hindi natin alam ano magiging pangangailangan natin sa isang linggo. But God sees that beforehand. Yun po yung sinasabi. Now, it is not that he will necessarily change the situation. But we can rest in the confidence and trust that whatever I am going through, whatever you are going through in this life, my friends, hindi na susurpresa ang Diyos. Nag-gets po natin yon. It doesn't take him by surprise. And that in the midst of any moment in your life, he is Jehovah Jireh. God who makes provision for the situation. Amen? And so, when Abraham called him Jehovah Jireh, hindi lamang sinasabi ni Abraham, He provided for my needs. No. Ang sinasabi niya, You, God, have seen, have experienced itong mga needs kong ito and made provisions for it. Di po ba napakaganda? It is very deeply personal. Our Lord is the God who provides because He is also the God who sees our needs. The God who experiences what we are going through in this life and therefore He can provide exactly what we need. And so there's a deep lesson in this name, Jehovah Jireh, for Isaac, or the ram, specifically, was a symbol of Christ, the only begotten son whom the father offered as a sacrifice for our sins on the mountains of Jerusalem, which is also known Moriah. But there's also a lesson for us in our everyday needs. We are all deeply needy people. We need physical, emotional, financial help and provisions you know, related to crises or, or challenges or emergency cases. In such times, we can approach Jehovah Jireh on the throne of grace. We can call him that because he is the God who provides. And so how has God provided? First, ito po ang pinakamahalaga. Provision for eternity. The name Jehovah Jireh, parang yung Jehovah Rohai, hindi po siya panglahatan. Nagets po natin? Hindi po ba yung Yahweh is Lord? No? And so therefore, yung Jehovah uh, Jaira, para ma-maximize mo yun. 
Of course, there is that common grace that is for everyone. But you want him to be the real great provider of your life? Then, kailangan mong makita the first and most important provision of Jehovah Jireh, and that is himself. The passage of Scripture is one of the foreshadowing stories, the clearest foreshadowing stories of the work of Jesus Christ. This story illustrates to us <coughs> the salvation that God has provided for the world in the death of His Son, Jesus Christ. The ram that was, that was slain uh, in place of Isaac is a type of, of Jesus. No? Pag sinabing type, ano po ba yung type? It is a person or event in the Old Testament taken as a foreshadowing or a revelation of something or someone in the New Testament. For example, in salvation, Noah's Ark, di ba? It's a picture na kailangan nandudung ka dun sa Ark para masave ka. Itong ram, ito yung kapalit upang sa ganoon mabuhay si Isaac. At siya ay type ni Jesus. Ibig sabihin, si Jesus ang siyang substitute na dapat tayo ang mamatay, subalit dahil nag-provide ng substitute, tayo ay mabubuhay. Nakuha po natin, God not only provided for Abraham, but He also provided His only Son so that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus is the provision, and therefore, the first and foremost or most important provision of Jehovah Jireh is Himself. Jesus would be provided as the Lamb for our sins. There is no other provision that comes to that now in time or in eternity. You want to know the character, the nature of God? There it is. That is the God we serve. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is the wonderful, the great provider. He is the one that wouldn't spare himself. But even, you know, he gave everything, even his very life, so that you and me could be saved, could have eternal life. Para magkaroon tayo ng buhay na walang hanggan na kasama natin, kapiling natin ang Panginoon. Now, Abraham did not assign a name on that hill based on his experiences and his challenges. Hindi niya tinawag na trial hill. Hindi niya tinawag na agony hill. Hindi niya tinawag na obedience hill. He named that place in recognition of God's actions, the provision hill. In doing that, he acknowledged and doon ang kanyang belief that God would ultimately provide the sacrificial offering for salvation on that hill in the future. Naintindihan po natin, the place where this sacrifice happened is very significant. Pwede naman sabihin ng Diyos kay Abraham, remember, nakatira siya sa Beersheba. Parang tayo. Bakit nandito tayo sa Fairview? Pero ang sabihin ni Lord, o oh, sige, pumunta ka sa Fairview Terraces o sa SM, malapit lang. Pero siya pinapunta sa Laguna. Parang ganun. Bakit? He directed him to the land of Moriah. One of the mountains there. Now, the only other place in the Bible where Moriah appears is in 2 Chronicles chapter 3, verse 1, where it stated that Solomon built the temple on Mount Moriah in Jerusalem. Nung panahon ni Abraham, an inhabited yung place. And then later, it would be the place where sacrificial lambs would be offered at the temple. Now, well-known commentators say, but they cannot prove it. They believe that Mount Moriah 
is the same as Mount Calvary, where God's Son would die as the sacrifice for our sin some 2,000 years later. Nag-gets po natin, nakita nyo kung gaano kahalaga yung place kung saan dapat i-offer si Isaac, yun din ang place kung saan pinako ang ating Panginoong Jesus. Brethren, our greatest need as humans is for salvation, the forgiveness of our sins and eternal life. The story of Abraham offering Isaac is more than just a, a dramatic illustration of faith and obedience. It is a preview of the salvation that God has provided us in the great sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ. On Calvary, the God who provides did what he asked Abraham to do. Only more so. Let me repeat John 3.16. For God, <coughs> sorry, so loved the world that he gave what? His only son. So that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Ang Dios, he asked Abraham to give his beloved son Isaac. But God could only ask this only because he would offer his own beloved son to die for our sins. Yun yung sakripisyo. Si Isaac, ang kanyang buhay na spared because a ram was provided. On Calvary, there was no substitute provided. The Lamb of God Jesus Christ died for our sins. When Isaac asked, where is the lamb? Abraham replied, God will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. That faith-filled statement is echoed in the New Testament by John the Baptist's exclamation in John 1, 29. The next day saw Jesus coming to him and said, Behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. My friends, I really contemplated on this that ito lang sana yung aking point for the sermon. Pero parang napaka-ikli naman na walang 30 minutes. Alam ko hindi kayo sanay na mag-sermon ako ng less than, sanay kayo isang oras ako nagsisermon. So, kailangan pahabain ko ng konti. Di po ba? Parang alanganin din kayo. Nung Pasko lang yun si Pastor, 30 minutes lang na gano'n. Kahit pamasko ko sa inyo. Now, God has provided for our eternal salvation by giving the greatest gift He could give His Son to die for our sins. So, sabi ni Paul in Romans 8, 32, He who did not spare His own Son, but delivered Him over for us all, how will He not also with Him freely give us all things? Tignan niyo yun, Romans 8, 32. Ano sinabi ni Paul? G having given the greatest gift, the greatest possible gift, God will surely, freely give us all things. Do you believe that? Do you really believe that? Parang dito lang yung ano, nakananiniwala doon. Do you really believe that? Amen. Diba? While God amazingly provided for the big needs, our eternity, salvation, the forgiveness of sins, He is also present in the smaller things. And that's my second point. Provision in our daily details. We get another great picture of the Lord's faithfulness to provide in Matthew chapter 6. Yung mga disciples, sila po ay nababalisa about their future. What would they and their families would eat and drink and wear? Sabi ni, ni Cristo, he stopped worrying. Why? Because God knew na kailangan niyo ang mga bagay na yan. He comforted them with how God provides for the birds and the lilies of the field. Allow me to read Matthew chapter 6, verses 26 to 30. Look at the birds of the sky that they do not sow, nor reap, nor gather crops into barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more important than they? 
And which of you by worrying can add a single day to his lifespan? And why are you worried about clothing? Notice how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor, nor do they spin thread for cloth. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Jesus called the disciples to stop worrying based on the fact that God would provide. He provides for the birds and clothes the lilies of the field. Brethren, will God not provide for us as well? Kung ang mga ibon at ang mga bulaklak, siya ang nagpo-provide. Sabi doon, hindi nga sila nag spin hindi sila gumagawa ng kanilang pananamit, ng kanilang damit. Pero ang kanilang kulay ay mas magara pa sa sinuot ni Haring Solomon. Now, ano ngayon ang problema natin? Bakit hindi siya Jehovah Jireh sa mga maliliit na detalye ng buhay natin at para tayong laging nababalisa pag tayo ay kulang? Mahalaga po na maunawaan natin. Now, this is important. It is essential to acknowledge the significant worth we hold in the eyes of God. It is essential to acknowledge the significant worth we hold in the eyes of God. Kung mapapansin nyo yung verse 26, can we flash again verse 26, yung pinakauna? Verse 26. Look at the birds of the sky. Tingnan nyo doon. Hindi niya sinabi, the bird's father. Anong sinabi niya? The disciple's heavenly father. Di po ba? And then, pagtapos nun, are you not much more important than they? Birds are not made in the image of God. They are not children. They are not sons and daughters of God. They are not co-heirs with Christ. God made man his chief in creation. In direct creation that happens at the new birth, when you accept Jesus as Savior and Lord of your life, he makes us one with Christ and indwells us. We are certainly more valuable than the birds than the grass, than the flowers. How much more will God make sure that we have all our needs? Kung mas mahalaga tayo kesa sa mga ibon at bulaklak, kung ang Diyos nagpo-provide para sa kanila, dapat masigit pa tayo, di po ba? Ganun natin titignan. He doesn't promise our wants. Sometimes we worry, we fear because we lack our wants. God promises to provide our needs. Therefore, a great amount of our fear, of our worry, happens because we don't really understand our immense value to God. Ulitin ko in Romans 8.32, He who did not spare His own Son, but delivered Him over for us all, how will He not also with Him freely give us all things? Binigay na ng Diyos ang best gift. His Son. Bakit hindi pa niya kaya mag-provide na anuman ng iyong pangangailangan? We are of supreme value. God gave it all for us. And therefore, mahalaga na maintindihan natin kung gano'n tayo kahalaga sa Diyos. So ang tanong, paano nga ba mag-grow ako sa pangunawa ako na ako ay napakahalaga sa Diyos? Allow me to share two things. Another 30 minutes. Pastor, ang haba na. We must constantly study scripture to know our value. Not only read. You are to study scripture. We must learn everything that God says about us. Everything. Lahat din ng mga pangako niya to us. We must internalize these truths. 
The more we do this, the more we will see our value to God. The more that we will overcome our fears and our worries. You have to consistently study the Word of God. Why? Because, my friends, the world is telling us a different story. We are an accident of evolution with no purpose. Kailangan natin ng degrees. Kailangan natin ng position. Kailangan natin ng pera. Kailangan natin ng beauty to have value. But God says, you are my everything. The apple of my eye. The object of my affection. And I gave it all for you. Nagets po ba natin yon? The apple of my eye. The object of my affection. And second, we must constantly pray to understand our value. In Ephesians 1.18, Paul says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. He petitions for the Ephesians to know experientially the riches of God's inheritance in his people. Hindi niya pinanalangin na malaman nila ano ba yung inheritance nila. Alam pinapanalangin niya na kayo mga believers ay God's inheritance. Nagets po ba natin? To God, we are His reward. We are His joy. We are His passion. We are special to God. Amen? Now, since Paul prays for the Ephesians to know this, it means that they did not know as it they should. And prayer was a means to grow in that knowledge. Therefore, we must constantly pray to know it as well. Lord, help me to really see my value, how great I am sa iyo. Now, Zephaniah 3.17 the Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice with you, over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. Our God enjoys us so much that he sings over us. Nagets po natin. And he wants to quiet our fears with his love. And therefore, we must grow, brethren, continue to grow in understanding this reality to overcome our fears and our worries because we know that He will provide. Bakit? I am of great value to Him. But again, no, hindi para sa lahat. Kailangan kinilala ko si Jesus bilang aking Panginoon at tagapagligtas. In this world, there is a lot of uncertainty about the economy, about employment, about education, even about retirement. Brethren, God wants us to know that His name is Yahweh Jireh. He is faithful and will provide. Finding God as your Jehovah Jireh requires a state of need. Para makilala mo ng lubusan at mag-grow ka doon, kailangan mo ng pangangailangan. Pero kailangan din ng obedience, kailangan din ng faith, kailangan din ng sacrifice. Someone said, Abraham learned that God provides when he laid everything on the altar. Brethren, listen. So if you are experiencing trials, difficulties, needs, crisis, do not despair. It is during those times that God draws near. It is during those times that you will learn more about Jehovah Jireh, the great and wonderful provider. And our response should only be to realize that all good things come from Him. 
that we are to thank him, that we are to praise him, and give out to others of the good things that he has given us. But we must remember that the greatest and most important provision of all is what God gives us through the cross. Jesus is God's first and foremost provision. Kung wala ka pang relasyon sa Panginoon, hindi mo masasabing Yahweh Jaira. So kilalanin mong ikaw ay makasalanan. Dahil yung kasalanan na yan ang siyang naghiwalay sa iyo sa Diyos. Kaya nga niya ipinadala ang kanyang bugtong na anak upang sa ganoon mabayaran ang iyong mga kasalanan. Kung kinikilala mo si Jesus na siya ang Diyos, ang Misiyas, anak ng Diyos, pinadala para sa katubusan ng iyong kasalanan, at kinikilala mo siya ngayon na siya ay master ng iyong buhay, doon, mo, mag, doon magsisimula ang pagkakilala mo sa Diyos bilang Jehovah Jaira. It is the provision of Jesus, the greatest, the first and foremost provision, the provision of the person and the work of Jesus Christ that meets our greatest, deepest needs. Brethren, may every one of us continue to learn more about Jehovah Jireh. But I hope that before you leave this place, you have really seen who God is and your relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we close this time together in your presence, we are filled again with gratitude for the revelations and truths we've shared about you as Jehovah Jireh, our great provider. Your word has reminded us of your faithfulness and the abundance of your love. Lord, we thank you for being a God who sees our needs and provides for us in ways beyond our understanding. May the message we've heard today resonate in our hearts and minds, prompting us to trust you more in your provision and to seek your will in all areas of our lives. This is our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen. <coughs> as, as I have mentioned, today is Communion Sunday. The Lord's Supper is a worshipful bringing to mind to Christ, of Christ our Lord, a dramatized proclamation of the gospel, a reaffirmation of our fellowship, and a foretaste of a victorious celebration that we will have with Christ when he comes again. Now, if you have repented of your sins, trusted in Christ for salvation, and submitted your life to his lordship, and even if you're not a member of this church, as long as you have accepted Jesus, you know that you have accept, accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord of your life, you are welcome to partake of the table of the Lord. But take heed of the warning of God's word. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the blood of the Lord. So, I hope, sorry, I hope na naintindihan din ng mga bata na ang mga bata na hindi pa nila naintindihan ang Lord's Supper, wag po natin sila pakainin ng elements. Okay? And so, uh, at this juncture, may I request everyone to confess your sins what you have done, what you have said, what you have thought of that displeased God, I'll give you a minute to do that.
Lord, we thank you for your promise that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. We know that we are your beloved child. Having received you into our heart and life and having accepted your death as penalty for our sinfulness, the price you paid covered us for all time. And our desire is to live for you. And as we take the bread representing your life that was broken for us and the wine representing your blood poured out from the cross we remember and celebrate your faithfulness to us and to all who will receive you because of your body broken and your blood shed for us we can be free from the power and penalty of sin thank you for your victory over death you took the death that we deserve and today we remember and celebrate the precious gift of life you gave us. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us all partake of the bread. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us partake of the cup. Lord, it's time we take communion. May every one of us want to recommit our life, our heart, our thoughts are everything to you. Would you fill us today with your powerful spirit? Lord, as we leave this place, help us to hold this fresh remembrance and the story that never grows old close to our heart. Would you help us to share its message faithfully as you open doors of opportunity? In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And now we go to our giving, and we ask you, the congregation, and the viewers to support our ministry, this church, through your giving. We indeed thank you all for your constant monetary support. And I reiterate our appeal for our church building fund. I hope that you would find it in your heart to give for this place. Proverbs 11, 24 says, There is one who scatters and yet increases all the more. And there is one who withholds what is justly due and yet it results only in poverty. Our God is Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. He has commanded us to give according to our cheerful hearts. If he provided for our greatest need, that is our eternity and salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ, his only son, he will surely provide for the smaller things. Just like in Romans 8.32, no? Just as Abraham trusted God, let us in the same manner trust God. Let us give to the Lord what he is due, kung anong nararapat para sa kanya. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your blessings and riches and the abundance. May our offerings be made to you with the cheerfulness of our hearts. And may they be sweet aroma to you. May these finances be used wisely for the furtherance of your kingdom. Grant that our ministry bears fruit, O oh Lord. Sustain us, your church. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
Gandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Hindi ho ako part 2 ng sermon ni Pastor. <laughs> Magbibigay lang po ako ng report sa ating launch na covenant giving for our sanctuary that started on May 2023. Sige. Yan po, makikita ko natin. When we started on April of 2023, uh, ang ating pong amount that we need to raise is nasa 181,000 approximately. That's every month. So yung orange po, yan po yung giving natin. At makikita po ninyo nung huling buwan ng 2023, which is December, for the first time, we were able to exceed uh, the 181, we nakakuha tayo na almost 195,000. Palakpakan po natin ang Panginoon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, katulad po na sinabi ni Pastor, the Lord our God, He is our Jehovah Jireh. And we know kung, uh, if we will only depend on our capabilities, laki, di ba? Parang, kung ditingin tayo kagad sa sarili natin, ang hirap And yet, if we rely on God and we give everything to God, ang Panginoon ang gagawa ng paraan through us. Uh, in summary, next slide please. Kung 1.6 po ang kailangan natin erased for the nine months that we have last year, ang nag-raise po natin ay 1,003,834 at ang kulang po ay nasa almost uh, 632,000. Just uh, to give us yung total summary po, by 2025, we must be able uh, to ask God for provision of 4,546,000. So, imposible? Para sa atin, yes. Pero hindi sa Panginoon. As always, sabi ng Lord, is anything too difficult for me? So, yung my righteous right arm will be the one to give, provide, and protect for everything that you need. So, with uh, starting this month for the next Sundays, we will be now launching Covenant Giving 2024. So, magpapas po ulit kami ng mga yung Covenant cards that we would, we would like you to pray for. So, ano pinimpress ng Panginoon na ibigay sa inyo uh, impress ng Panginoon na ibigay ninyo para sa sanctuary ninyo. In eight cases like this, parati sinasabi ng Lord sa akin, paano kita bibigyan ng provision kung yung kamay mo kasi parating nakasara? Okay. Kasi ito yung, ito yung akin eh. So, hahawakan ko. Eh, pag, pag binigyan ka ba ng pera, may, 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 may masasapo ka ba kung pakamay mo parating nakasara? So sabi ng Lord, open mo para naman meron akong maibigay na da dadaan sa'yo. So yun lang po ang sinasabi ng Lord sa akin. Always be open. Always give your hand and I will be the one to provide. Maraming salamat po. Thank you so much, Chairman Moy. Sure, nakita nyo. Tatlong million na lang. Hindi po ba? And God will really provide. And it's the prayer of your pastor. Na remember the last sermon sa Exodus nung sinabi ni Moses, enough. Sana dumating tayo before May. <laughs> Sorry. Magsasalita po ako dito at itigil na yung pagbibigay sa covenant sapagkat na-hit na natin yung ating target. Amen. God is our Jehovah Jireh. And kita niyan, dami kong dala. Ito, plus marami pang hindi nakuha mga visitors natin. No? So we have to welcome our visitors. Thank you for joining us and we really appreciate your time no? na kasama namin po kayo. Well, of course, I have here Shaira Distura. Shai? Ayun, nasa here on my right. And of course, Brother Gilbert. Brother Gilbert Oroseo. It's nice to see you. And uh, Dina Kainap, Dina Kainap, nasa center. Annaline Perater, Annaline Perater, there at the back. Ito yung mga mother. 
mga mothers ng Sunday school kids natin. Okay? And Mo, Monesa, Apolonio, or Apolinario. They're at the back. Thank you. And Margaret Lazalita. Lazalita. And din po sa likod. Thank you. Eleanor Francisco. And din po sa likod. Joyce Carmelo. And don't like CR. Okay. And Roseanne Aranquez. Roseanne, there also at the back. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, at this juncture, no, tayo po ay uh, prayer hardel. But before that, tignig din po ang inyong program. Basahin niyo rin po yung truth nuggets. If it says there, are all people just as they were lost through Adam, saved through Christ? No, basahin din po natin, and I hope that this will be part ng inyo pong pagmature at uh, pagkaintindi as you digest ito pong mga nuggets na ito sa inyo pong araw-araw na devotion. All right? And so, today is uh, we'll have our prayer huddle. I'll give you only three minutes because overtime na tayo. Okay? Uh, hanap po tayo ng ating prayer partner. Please look for a prayer partner. Look for a prayer partner. <coughs> pray for our guests, pray for our guests. Two more minutes, two more minutes.
All right, may I request everyone to please rise. Nakalimutan kong i-greet Lieutenant Junior Grade. Ken Villegas, our P-Mayor here. Ang asawa niya, si Doc Donna. Nice to have you. Let us pray. Our gracious, loving Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And as we leave this place, may the assurance of your provision accompany us. May it be, O oh God, a guiding light in moments of uncertainty and a source of strength when challenges arise. Would you help us, O oh Lord, to live out the truth that you are our Yahweh Jireh in every aspect of our lives. We pray for a spirit of generosity to fill our hearts. And as we give our offerings, Lord, to our covenant giving, covenant giving, Lord, may it be a testimony that we really indeed trust you as our Jehovah Jireh. May the impact of your word today go beyond these walls and touch the lives of others, drawing them closer to you. And also, Lord, as we part ways, we lift up our sick and recovering brethren, asking for your healing touch to be upon them. Would you grant them strength, comfort, and a speedy recovery? May your love and peace surround them. Oh God, guide us all in the week ahead. May our actions reflect the teaching shared today in your name. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power that is at work in us to him, be all the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen and amen. Amen. Ayan, muli po nating ibigay sa Diyos ang pinakamataas na pagluwalhati, pagdakila, pasasalamat. Minsan paawitin po natin ang sapat na at higit pa.
us and see you all for next Sunday. To God be all the glory.